Hi, my name is Ruby. Um, I use she, her pronouns. I just turned 19 um, and I'm lucky enough to be a freshman at college in person, hence the dorm background in my roommate's bed behind me. Um, and I'm currently on the East Coast, so it's, it's a nice 940 for me. Uh, the sun's already set and I'm excited to be here with you guys. Um, just a little bit more about what's gonna go on. I'm just gonna ask the panelists to introduce themselves, tell me a little bit about who they are. So give me their name, their age, their pronouns, um, what school they go to slash where they are in the schooling process um, and also where they live. And then we're just gonna go through some questions and we'll get some answers. And then if there's anything, any questions from the crowd, um, please feel free to put those in the chat and we'll have a little portion after we do the pre-written questions if there's any additional Um, thank you so much. So now I'm just going to ask the panelists to introduce themselves. Um, so I'm just going to say your name and you can sort of just tell us a little information. Um, so first, Buddy Four. Hi, I'm Buddy Four. Uh, uh, he, him pronouns. Uh, I'm 18 years old and I, right now I'm not, uh, I, I graduated high school last year and I'm doing a lot of volunteer stuff, but I'm not actually in school right now. Um, and where I live, I live in Inverness. Thank you, Ruby. Uh, thanks, buddy. Um, Maya De Santo, could you go? Hi, my name is Maya. I'm um, 13. I'm in my last semester. Um, I use she, her pronouns, and I'm located in Thank you so much. Uh, Vanessa Benito. I just wanted to pop in really quick. If everyone who's not a panelist could please mute themselves, that would be really helpful um, because if you speak, you pop up on the screen. So I just want to encourage uh, everyone who's not intending to speak and be seen to mute themselves. And also one last housekeeping thing I forgot. Um, if you could watch this on speaker mode, so change your view to speaker mode so you get to see the panelists front and center. If you're on gallery, it's a little hard. There's going to be a lot of people all over the place. And with that couple of tech interruptions, I will pass back to you, Ruby. Um, I am Vanessa Benito. I'm currently a junior at Drake. I'm 17 years old and I live in Forest Knowles and I use she, her pronouns. Thank you. Uh, Kylie, could you go? Hi, I'm Kylie Clark. I've lived in the Bay Area my entire life, but right now I live in the San Geronimo Valley. I am 14 and an eighth grader at Lagunita School. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm really happy to be here and share the experience. Thank you. Um, David Rodriguez. Hi, my name is David. Um, my preferred pronouns are he, him. I'm 14 years old and I live at Inverness. I'm in ninth grade and I go to Tamales High School. Thank you. Atticus? Um, hi, my name is Atticus. I'm 14 years old and I go to Lagunitas Middle School. I'm in eighth grade. Um, I go by he, him pronouns and uh, I live in the um, San Geronimo Valley. Thank you. Sergio? Sergio Dominguez, he, him, 18-year-old uh, uh, senior from Tomas High School, and I live in Petaluma. Thank you. And Ulysses? Hi, I'm Ulysses. My pronoun are he and him. I'm 14. I go to Tomales Middle School and I'm in eighth grade, and I live in Petaluma. Perfect, thank you. So now I'm just gonna go into start asking questions. Um, so feel free to just uh, start talking uh, or raise your hand panelists, um, do whatever feels more comfortable to you. Um, and if there's anything that comes on your mind or someone says something that you wanna respond to, now's the perfect time. Um, so the first sort of section we have are questions more focusing on the academic and your school experience. So the qu first question we have tonight is what were the biggest challenges and what are the fears that you have around your academics after this first year of remote learning? Um, I can go first for that. Um, wait, can you repeat the question again, please? Yeah. 
what were the biggest challenges and what are the fears you have around your academics after this year of remote learning? Um, well, some of the biggest challenges for me, I think we're listening in Zoom class. And one of my biggest fears um, was, is uh, like how much learning loss I, I've had from being in Zoom. And I feel like I could have learned uh, like a lot more if I was actually in the actual classroom and uh, with the actual teachers and um, being more hands on. But um, yeah, that's that's my biggest fear is like how is how much I could have learned that I've that I didn't because of being in Zoom. Definitely a big concern. Uh to that too, I feel like focus and lack of motivation was definitely a big uh, challenge to overcome towards the beginning, you know, it was definitely a very uh, different um, situation we were in, so lack of motivation was definitely a big one, you know, it's like, do you, I really want to try at school, I don't know what to do, I'm not sure who to ask for help and that, and I also agree with um, uh, the uh, preparedness is also asked to what we didn't learn, you know, I feel like I could have learned way more than I didn't while uh, I lost um, a few stuff, I missed out a few stuff uh, during my senior year, you know, definitely um, the schedules weren't the best, um, definitely missed out on a lot of stuff. And I feel like that's just some stuff that might come back to haunt me in uh, college. You know, I feel like I could definitely be more prepared and I get missing out a lot on a few more uh, curriculums and stuff going into college. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a scary prospect. Uh, for me, I guess I, well, I, I, I graduated high school at the very beginning of the pandemic, like, uh, but ba basically my senior year was wrapping up and I, I guess for me, it was just, uh, the whole idea of like, you know, missing a, for me, like having deciding what I exactly want to do with my academics in the future because of all the remote learning and all the you know me like exactly where I want to be you know how I want to learn in the future like do I want to get a job do I want to go to college you know a lot of that just kind of got thrown out the window for a whole year because of all of this and that that's pretty yeah not too good <laughs> I know Ulysses is writing his out in the chat um, and I can read that out aloud to you guys, but while he's doing that, does anyone else have any sort of thoughts, thoughts on this question? Um, adding on to Atticus and Sergio, um, I feel like um, I missed on a lot of stuff as well, especially with like, you know, if you have younger siblings, you have to also look out for them. And um, one of my biggest concerns throughout this whole year was kind of like, um, oh, like, you know, I need to make sure my siblings aren't like, are in their class, making sure they're doing their work. And then also I'm over here like, wait, I need to do my work as well. So it's kind of like missing out on some stuff and then like making sure my siblings are on top of stuff. Yeah, definitely a lot of new responsibilities that weren't expected or necessarily wanted either. <laughs> I definitely agree with Vanessa. Like, it's really hard to be helping your siblings and making sure they're on time to their classes and help them with their homework. But then you look at yourself and you're like, oh my gosh, I can barely do my own work because I'm either distracted or procrastinating or don't have a lot of motivation. So it's hard to be telling your siblings to do something and helping them with something when you can barely kind of help yourself. Yeah, it's really hard when you have to focus on all these different priorities. Does anyone else have anything they want to add before we move on? I can add to Kylie's comment. I definitely, some days I was procrastinating and didn't want to do work, but um, I had to or else the, obviously the due date, turn stuff in, um, get good grades. Um, other days I was really focused, I'm like, okay, wake up early, try to get, log into Zoom, 
finish my assignments and maybe I can nap for calm day, but that I definitely couldn't tell him to do it. Not today, I don't want to. I like, it was, I procrastinated and did kind of hard waking up every day and it's literally the same exact thing. Some days were different, which was nice when we had less work and it was, sometimes we got to interact with other students, which was nice because we never talked to them or see them except for Zoom, which we were all just paying attention and listening to our teachers and doing our work. Definitely. Um, and also just for people who maybe haven't been looking at the chat, um, Ulysses typed his response. Um, so I'm just gonna read that out to you. He said, some of his difficulties, um, like Attica said, um, are sort of like how difficult and easy it is can be on Zoom and also the difficulty of not being able to hear what's going on or pay attention. And also the stress around gates, which uh, has really only amplified when you only have a few things to focus on. Um, anyone else wanna add before I move on? Okay, so the next question, still focusing around school, is after only a year of being engaged through a screen and learning in a very different way, what do you feel, what do you, feel you need to be re-engaged, motivated, and supported now that we start to re-enter into sort of a different academic form? Have your motives or aspirations changed related to your academics? I feel like a big uh, part of getting reintegrated into school would be getting integrated into like a similar environment, you know, going back to school, having all these big changes, you know, uh, this big, uh, due to COVID, you know, safety rules, it's definitely more difficult to um, uh, focus on uh, your academics, you know, when you have to be more, uh, how do I say, more, I guess, safe. That definitely is a big deal um, in getting integrated in school. You know, if you go to school, but you have all these big changes, you know, you can't socialize with friends and that. It's definitely going to be more harder. And you can't really focus in school because some schools don't really have learning. They still have uh, Zoom classes, but in school and the internet's not that good. I feel like getting everything sorted out before uh, re-entering the kids is definitely a, a big issue. You know, you don't want it and reintegrate all the students but have these big changes you know that will um, affect the, their um, abilities to learn buddy i see that you unmuted <laughs> yeah yeah thank you uh yeah i guess for me the the thing that's changed the most i mean like i haven't been like i said i haven't been in school in a while and well not a while i guess almost a year now it's crazy anyways <laughs> uh yeah i think for me personally it's uh you know things going back exactly the way they were beforehand you know that's my biggest fear because i see how school has affected some of my friends and, you know, just acquaintances and whatever, and how it's affected them negatively and positively. And I've seen a lot of negative things, you know, like the stress people have and stuff. And I really don't want that, that to all just kind of rush back, you know, now that this is kind of coming to a close. Yeah, we all have a chance to sort of redecide what normal looks like. And there are some things that we frankly don't need to keep carrying along with us, for sure. What are some other ways that you guys um, would like to feel supported? What are some other things that you feel like you need in order to transition back into a normal school life? I feel like for freshmen, it's a bit like way more harder, especially trans transitioning from like a middle school to a bigger school. Um, Personally, at Drake, uh, we have this meet and greet, or yeah, meeting and eat, and um, nobody really goes to them, like no freshmen, but it's part of ASB, and we try to include, like, we try to make friends with, like, other people, but it seems like most of them have, like, a hard time just being, like, themselves and, like, getting comfortable. Definitely, and that's a whole new skill to learn how to do online, for sure.
anyone else have any other ideas, things they'd like to see going on moving forward? I think that it's important for teachers and parents to understand that now that we're going back, it's not just going to be like we're snapping our fingers and can suddenly do everything we used to be doing because we've had a year of a lot of lack in social um, stuff and schoolwork. So it's going to be hard to like go right back into school and take a test on like the first or second day and get an A immediately or something because we've been so distant and we just haven't been used to that. So I think it's really important for teachers and parents to understand that, you know, we're gonna try to try our best, but sometimes that can be really hard. Um, yeah, like, I just to agree with Kylie on that, um, like some teachers maybe could like lessen homework load or something. Um, at my school, there isn't really that much homework, but for a lot of schools with a lot of homework, I think that that would be very hard on kids. like going from like several cl class slash hour days into having like having full school uh waking up really early and then like having to go back to do a lot of homework and stuff like I feel like that would be kind of hard and maybe like lessen it at the beginning and um strengthen or make the load slightly larger as um we get go back into uh normality Definitely. Uh, as a college student, I regularly wake up at 1030 for my 1110 class, and I do not know how I woke up at six for four years every day. Um, and so I think we definitely have to give people a lot of leeway. And this is not a question I'm, I'm expecting you, the panelists, to answer. This is more like a rhetorical question. But I think it's, we also have to sort of decide what are the systems and structures that we want to learn, that we want to figure out how to bring back into our lives, and what are the ones that we want to say goodbye to? What are expectations we had of ourselves and the people around us that were actually hurting ourselves more than they were helping? Um, I think that that, for me, is also something that's really important to sort of center on this, this conversation of re-entry, because um, it's also a form of recreation and rebirth. It's, it's a new renaissance of who we are and what we want to be. Um, and sort of in that line, um, I'm wondering, panelists, like, do you feel like your voices were listened to during the pandemic? Do you feel like they were listened to um, in the change moving to online? Do you feel like your voices were listened to um, when there's sort of this new form of re-entry re into the physical classroom? This can be both in terms of your school, this can be in terms of your family, this can be in terms of, in terms of what other, whatever other aspects of your life. But do you feel like you were heard? um to a certain degree but but to a certain degree but you know it's hard for parents teachers principals and students to um meet every meet everyone's desire so um but to a certain degree yes I'm going to be brutally honest. I feel like in some ways the school systems did fail to uh, um, meet the certain needs of students. You know, the communication in some aspects was definitely not that good. Um, they did try to, um, in general, they tried to meet the needs of students, but they didn't really look into the individual aspect. Like each student has their own way to cope with uh, the certain situations they're put in or the changes, their, the changes in their environment. So I feel like the, my school did uh, in some individual ways, they did do a good job or other aspects where, you know, some teachers didn't communicate with you. And when they did communicate, it would be old school stuff. They didn't really look into the uh, personal or the mental aspect of it. So I feel like um, communication could have been way better, but not only by uh, schools, I feel like in some um, ways, my parents were good at uh, communicating with me, how I was being affected, how I, how what uh, ways I could be um uh I could be helped you know to uh better adapt to the changes that quarantine brought on and I feel like that maybe wasn't something everybody had so I feel like uh more adults in that whether it was in school school staff and that could have stepped in you know and not just been you know teacher oh you need help school no you could have more uh, uh I would say a person helping you know just not school stuff but also as a 
um, advocate for, uh, I guess, mental health and stuff, you know, just checking in the students and stuff. So I feel like communication definitely should have been way better and it should have been more individual. I feel like uh, focusing in a, whole, a huge group and saying, oh, these students, this is what they need to do better. No, you sh I feel like it should have been more of a whole group thing. Not, I mean, not a whole group thing, an individual thing. So, yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. I think that a lot of times when students were struggling, we were, you know, and talk to teachers about it. A lot of times we would be met with lectures instead of care and compassion. And I think a lot of times teachers would um, kind of not understand maybe that students are going through a really hard time even though it seems like yeah we're just sitting at home we have a lot of extra time on our hands but it's really hard as a student to use that time when there's a lot of pressure on you to actually use it well it's really hard actually to do it yeah just for me personally and a lot of other people i think is the the idea that like you know if you end up missing something like because of whatever you can't really catch up a lot of ways i've i've noticed and that's just with a lot of things involving zoom and like online stuff like it's the communication is definitely kind of inconsistent in a lot of ways and it feels like you have to like not just be there you know at the meeting but also really like physically be there as well in a lot of ways which is not something that's easy for a lot of people yeah. Yeah, that's definitely, definitely some good insight. Does anyone else have any sort of thoughts about ways in which they were or weren't heard or supported? Um, adding on to Sergio's, I feel like instead of like teachers always like pushing us to like, do like, oh, like make sure you do your work and turn this on time, there should be like, a mentor to like guide us like you know I can give you or like they can be like more understanding of like oh if you want I can give you a bit more time or have one-on-one -on -one teaching with you if you'd like but like I feel like um teachers were more focused on us making sure like the work was getting turned in than like our actual mental health Yeah, the, the classic, uh, how are you doing as opposed to what are you doing question. Yeah, definitely hard over Zoom to maintain that sort of personal bond and relationship. Um, anyone else have any other questions before we move on? Nice. Okay, so um, our next sort of question is sort of focusing on the idea of youth, right? Um, there's a really, especially in popular culture, there's just a really big emphasis on what it means to be young. You know, your college years, your high school years, the years of your youth are like known as like your golden years, the time that you're always going to look back on with nostalgia. Um, and so I think it's been especially difficult for young people to sort of feel like a year, a year and a half of their lives have been taken away. Um, and a formative year that they're not going to be able to get back, right? You're never going to be able to get back that senior year you weren't able to have. Um, and I think that that's caused a lot of stress. Um, and so I'm just sort of wondering, um, we've all missed out on a lot of experiences and memories this year. Um, so how did this year impact your friendships? And what has it been like returning to school after a year of not being around your classmates? I can go. Uh... I, well, honestly, for me, it's it, a lot of this, I feel like is shedding uh, light on a, a bigger issue of the fact that, uh, and a lot for a lot of people, like strong social connection, connections aren't really made in high school, even though a lot of people assume they are, you know? And I think that that is a really important thing to think about in high school and college and just young people in general, not everyone is gonna have like a large social circle uh, to lean on it, even when it's normal times. And like with something like this, some people are just at home on a computer or a phone and 
they don't really have anything at all. And that's, that's really sad. Yeah, definitely true. Other thoughts or, or emotions around this, and they don't necessarily have to just be your relationships with your friends. It can also be how this change relationships with your parents, um, with other important people in your lives. I learned that social interactions are definitely a big deal when it comes to stress, you know, relieving stress, uh, social interactions, being seeing your friends at uh, school, you know, playing basketball during lunch, uh, playing sports practices. It definitely puts, uh, you know, takes away most of the stress that you have from you get from school and from homework. And definitely during quarantine, would um, for some people, I think you would have, they had to adapt, find new ways to um, relieve that stress, you know, and I felt like that was a good, and it had some positives, you know, learning new hobbies and that, uh, make, um, just doing new stuff was a great way to um, relieve that stress. But it definitely, uh, is a, it was a great way to, uh, you know, learn new stuff about yourself, you know, get to connect with yourself more as a person. And going back and being able to interact with new people definitely did good for, uh, many people in so many ways, whether it comes to stress, uh, mental health, you know, just enjoying yourself, enjoying life. Mm -hmm. I think that that definitely resonates. I can add on to that. Um, I knew for eighth grade, um, we usually do a lot of big uh, things socially, like, um, I was really looking forward to like just like decorating for dances, going to uh, six flags to um, socialize and spend some time with my friends. And I have a, a small uh, friend group, so um, we get we like hanging out with each other with each other a lot, like making each other laugh. I know it's really fun pre-COVID. Um, for a while, um, when we were on Zoom. Um, we had a cohort, so we, I only had one friend in my friend group that was really, um, that I talked to her. And with my other friends, I really didn't really talk to them for a while. It was kind of weird, but um, we have recently reconnected since I'm back um, in person, um, which is nice. But um, that was kind of weird. We were still friends. It was just, we kind of didn't talk to each other. And I was definitely also looking forward to uh, eighth grade year and a lot of big things. And now we only have um, two months left, I think, which is kind of shocking and like, oh, that went by really fast. Um, that was definitely my impact on COVID and Zoom. Oh no, <laughs> only two months left. Yeah, I think Zoom time is a, a just completely new concept, at least for me. Um, I look at the clock and I'm either amazed by how early or late it is. I never anticipate what's actually going on. Anyone else have anything they want to share regarding relationships and how COVID affected them? Um, I'd like to add to that. Um, this year impacted our um, my friendship with some of my friends because um, I, we didn't get to get close or near them much as we used to back then. And well, it's a bit different um, not being able to hang out with your friends. Um, also, to uh, actually add to what I said earlier, this was a great year to really see, it really reflects who you can uh, count on. It really showed the true side of people, you know, it really shows who you can actually look, uh, lean on during times of crisis and that, whether it was your parents or teachers, it shows their true colors, you know, you, you know who you could tr who could truly help you when you need the help. And um, I feel like th it made strong connections in that, whether it was your parents, my parents definitely did a great job making sure I was on my stuff, so it definitely uh, um, strengthened our bond, you know. Uh, also, teachers that were um, not only looking after me academically, but, you know, mentally and see, making sure I was um, okay with all these changes in that definitely strengthened my bond with them. So I feel like although um, you have all these negatives, a big positive was really getting to see who you could, um, uh, you could um, trust, you know as uh, 
adults or when they're friends, you can it shows you uh, their true colors. So, you know, but yeah. Yeah, it was definitely a, a big learning opportunity, uh, forced growth, not necessarily wanted. Atticus? Um, well, I was just gonna say like with friendships, um, it, it kind of it kind of strengthened my bonds with some of my friends and also cut off some bonds because um, during COVID, I'm not sure exactly how like five, six months of um, being in like complete lockdown. I'm not really sure, but um, but like there's a lot of people who just kind of like was like isolated even on like social media and like playing video games or something like that. And then there was a lot of people who like made an effort to try to reach out to you and like try to talk to you still and um, keep contact with you. So that kind of like strengthen my bonds with them with those people who actually made efforts to reach out and I made efforts to reach out to them and stuff and but there was a lot of people who just didn't make any effort and um and that was kind of interesting to kind of see that sort of that friendship sort of like crumble away yeah sort of like a pruning process trying to figure out what branches are going to keep growing um anyone else have any final thoughts Okay, um, so sort of thinking about, we've just talked a lot about like sort of disappointments from the pandemic. Do you have any disappointments um, maybe in school, maybe at work um, or just sort of socially in like a broader community context or even national context? Um, what sort of disappointments have you experienced as you start to re-enter these environments? Um, is it what you expected? Is it not? What ways is it different? What makes it better? What makes it worse? And you can sort of like, talk about whatever aspect you feel like. I, I can go again. Uh, yeah, uh, for me personally, I think the biggest disappointment, like I've kind of mentioned earlier on, is the idea that what was before the pandemic was actually good. And in a lot of cases, it wasn't. You know, there's so many institutions, education, you know, the police force, the there's you can you can name a lot of them, uh, which are just, you know, were were broken before the pandemic and after if you know if something isn't changed will still be broken yeah normal is something we all get to choose and it's something that we weren't necessarily aware that we were choosing before for sure and we also have any other sort of disappointments big or small they want to share are we talking about like disappointments that we had during the pandemic or now? Disappointments as you start to re-enter or like move back into maybe like a non-virtual school format or as we start to try and reimagine what, you know, the summer and what next year could be like. Okay, yeah, I think that some disappointments going, you know, back into school specifically would just be like, I think it, on our second or third day back to school, we just had like, I don't like a test or something and it was just like whoa okay it just felt really abrupt and just like all of a sudden we're back into something that there could have been a bit of leading up to and some kind of like I don't just a little more support from teachers could have been there but I don't I don't know if that really could have been provided because we lost a lot of learning time during the pandemic, we kind of needed to jump back in, but it just felt really abrupt. Yeah, definitely structuring the classroom in that kind of way would be a really intense sort of bring back. And I would definitely be disappointed if I was expected to take a test like two days after going from online, you know. Yeah, adding on to Kylie's like, um, like the first week we got back to school, it's like, oh, like 
uh, you have like assigned seats and like you're gonna have to take this test like um, make sure you actually try and like just like focus on school at the moment and also another big disappointment that happened was um, last year everybody was mostly close to everyone and like just this whole year like the school kind of just like got like went their own way and I don't know <laughs> um just it's just different now so yeah yeah it definitely affects it affects everything <laughs> and don't worry if you don't have too many disappointments we're okay with that um but if it always comes up later, please feel free to, to bring up how we're disappointing you. So we don't continue to do that in the future. Um, I think a lot of time it's not important, like this, this space wouldn't be a successful conversation if we only talked about the successes and we didn't recognize the failures, right? What would it mean if we don't recognize our system is broken? Um, so I think it's really important to like be honest about the ways in which we feel failed um, as a generation and as individuals and as specific community members as well. Um, that information is super valuable and very valid, even if you can only speak from what happened to you individually. And so sort of like keeping on that sort of theme of, of taking care of yourself, um, as well as like emotional well-being, um, what have you been doing to take care of yourself this year, sort of remain here? Um, and how have you learned to navigate stress? What's helped? What hasn't? Do you feel like you've been successful? Have you learned something about yourself on the way? I can kind of start, I think. Uh, I think that I mean, I don't really want to sugarcoat it because it has been really hard to manage stress. And I think a lot of times, I don't even know if this is considered a coping mechanism, but a lot of times for me and a lot of people around me who I know, like you, there would just be days where you just I'd watch Netflix or scroll through social media and it's hard to actually get up and do something. And I mean, there have definitely been things that have been really good from the pandemic in a lot of ways that I've been able to do creative stuff like baking and making art and doing music and stuff. That's been really great, but it's also been really hard to manage stress and manage all of it. Yeah, yeah I feel like yeah. hobbies are a great way to learn skills, you know, while also relieving stress, you know, dealing with mental stuff and learning about yourself. I feel like, um, you know, going outside for walks was a great way to, um, you know, calm yourself down, relieve the stress, you know, learning new stuff, new skills was a great way to um, cope with everything, you know, and get kind of also a great way to distract yourself from everything that was going on, you know. Uh, distract, get away from the world for a bit. Uh, so I feel like hobbies was definitely a great way for everybody to get their mind off what was going on while, you know, enjoying, being able to enjoy stuff from home, you know. Yeah, yeah figuring out ways to keep yourself occupied is a super important skill. Something for me that really helped uh was working with my community you know we're in a lot of different ways i working like on some climate action groups working with the san Geronimo food bank working with a lot of different people uh really really also helped me appreciate just uh kind of a lot of the positives that sometimes i can forget are like right here in marin, marin county you know uh, and also it, it's, it, uh, it's really empowering for me, at least, uh, realizing that I can actually like change parts or help get parts more stronger in our community. Yeah, definitely a big time to find self outside of your own individuality. Maya? Um, yeah, 
I was able to um, to get myself through this, just staying at home and wanting to go outside. I um, reconnected with one of my friends. So it was just me and her. We would um, go to Dillon Beach and we, we both picked up skateboarding together, which was really nice. Um, some days we would just get there at like 12 in the afternoon and stay till sunset. It was really nice, just both of us just riding through Dillon Beach and the beach is really nice and the sunset obviously is really beautiful. Um, looking out on the bay and the ocean, which was really nice. That's my way and I picked up a new hobby um, to get myself through, I guess, quarantine and this whole COVID thing. Definitely. Skateboarding sounds like a really fun skill to pick up. As uh, someone who can't ride a bike, uh, I'm envious. <laughs> um, adding on to Kylie's, there were some days where I just like, well, I'm not doing anything, but some days um, I just got closer to my sister during quarantine. So some days we would like go biking and like we would just have picnics and like go everywhere. So she really helped me like navigate my stress and like just being out with her really made me like uh, focus more, like concentrate more on like doing school. And then on the weekends we would like uh, do picnics or hike. You, Ruby, you're on mute. Ah, I muted and I muted myself. I'm sorry. Um, does anyone else have any other questions about how they were or weren't able to handle stress before we move forward? Sounds like a no or a really quiet yes. Um, so I'm just gonna go take us to the next question. Um, and I think it's really important for us to recognize that like right now, the pandemic wasn't just us dealing with the coronavirus. The pandemic was also us dealing with a myriad of other things, both on like a national level, an international level, and also a really local level. Um, so it, like speaking to our local communities alongside a pandemic, we also experienced a lot of wildfires um, pretty close to home. I know I was in my living room and turned around and saw the hill on fire. And I was like, that's not supposed to look like that. Um, and so we are all dealing with a lot of different stresses at the same time. Um, and as well, there was also a lot of movement and uprising and recognizing um, around our history of racial injustice and how that is not just a historical thing, that's something that's happening in the very present tense of the moment, as well as with um, more movement towards the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, and so sort of thinking about all of these different things happening at once, a larger social reckoning with our structures we have in place and whether, feeling, whether we're feeling like we're being supported as individuals and members of different communities of our identity, um, how did all of these different things impact your mental health, um, sort of sitting at home trying to grapple with all these really big, big issues that are happening? Um, well, for me, like when the fires and the Black Lives Matter um, riots and stuff were going on, just in my head, I was just kind of thinking like, how much more crazy can this get? And like, um, but like some of the stuff was like very positive, but it was also very crazy. Um, but I, I just, I felt like I started to kind of take like a lot of the stuff that I do have for granted during COVID and, um, um, and like the fires and stuff, because I don't know, I just kind of felt like it was like, the most crazy thing ever and it was like not going to get any more crazy or something like that but um for me it just kind of made me like unmotivated and kind of just like like I felt like I felt myself like spacing out a lot and stuff just like thinking about I don't know like like wishing that I could be with my friends or something like that that kind of thing it's funny because during times of crisis do you expect people to unite you know and lean on one another but instead like this was caused more division that you know we're all going through the same thing you know something that was all affecting us negatively mentally but then you have you had racial injustices and stuff like that and it further impacted us more negatively but then people you have people taking sides in that 
and you know instead of trying to help each other you know checking on one another oh how are you you know how is this affecting you that we're each, everybody's going for each other's throats you know just for pe- having your own opinions uh you know it's it was it's definitely sad to see instead of having people you know try to help one another you know help each other cope you had these people just trying to you know take sides and then trying to attack one another's kind of sad to see but definitely uh would have affected me it definitely affected me mentally negatively because you know i you expect to see everybody trying to help one another you know everybody's going through a tough time you accept you expect us as a country to know to unite and try to help one another and said you have division yeah definitely sort of an eye-opening experience yeah uh for me it's yeah noticing kind of the fact that like you kind of end up dropping one thing for another a lot of times during this last year for uh that that really bothered me you know like when when the fires were going on you know it's like the the whole BLM and all that just kind of went out you know like it's like it's like everyone can focus on one thing at a time but not you know but when it's not when the thing is not being focused on whether uh, even if it's it's still which it is many things are still extremely important they just kind of um feel almost forgotten about you know and i i i think that really bothered me uh most bothered my mental health and just how i f- feel about how things can go uh that that thing that i think that was the biggest negative impact on me just seeing how you know people can forget about something that's important because something new is also important <laughs> you know Yeah, that's definitely difficult. Anyone else, have, anyone else have anything they want to add? Um, I have one little thing. I think for me, while the while a lot of it was really, really stressful, you know, going to protests and marches and stuff, it kind of brought a sense of solidarity. And it was in the middle of, I feel like it was, um, like when there was the fires and a lot of Black Lives Matter protests that was kind of right in the middle of this whole pandemic and feeling really alone. And it kind of brought a sense of like, okay, yeah, we're all still here and we're all doing this together. And it felt really good to actually like go to marches and stuff because it just brought a sense of solidarity in the middle of like complete, I mean, yeah. Yeah, being able to center and focus around some sort of larger movement, I think, especially I can definitely understand that it was a, it was a really great moment when I was able to like be in the streets with thousands of people saying something, you know, not just being an individual, but being an individual and meaning something that I was there. Um, and Vanessa texted me something in the chat um, and just saying that she wanted to add on to what Sergio was saying, um, that it affected her negatively well, especially because there's a lot of police brutality going on during the protests. Um, it, I think it's really hard. And also just sort of personally, I think it's it's really interesting. We see a tendency to sort of view young people as being apathetic or pe- overly pessimistic about our future. Um, I think we're just being honest with ourselves. Um, you know, this year I kept seeing memes and it was the beginning of January and you'd be like, here are 15 crazy things that happened and it's the 17th of January. Um, and I think it's just like, they're one thing after another, after another, it becomes so numbing, right? It's really hard to, to to like worry about what's coming next. Um, And it's easier to just sort of like not think that these are gonna get better because I mean, I think think that's a pretty reasonable assumption to have right now. Um, And I think it's also not not entirely fair for for older generations to say, oh, I'm so proud of you for doing all these things. I I think that we definitely deserve, deserve to be applauded, but it's not our job to fix the problems that older generations frankly created and are continuing to perpetuate and be benefited by. Um, It's not enough to just say, oh, well, I'm sorry, because that's not going to change anything. Admitting that you are a part of the problem and then continuing to do nothing is kind of worse than not recognizing you're a part of the problem in the first place. Um, And so one of the other questions we have is that um, 
for high schoolers and especially young adults, but also for middle, our middle school panelists, um, did you see an uptick in your peers' uses of um, unhealthy coping techniques like using drugs or alcohol in order to sort of numb these feelings of worry and stress? Um, and how has this impacted the lives of the people around you in the past couple of months? Um, for me, I definitely saw an uptick of that, but um, I'm not necessarily sure if it was for coping for with like specifically for COVID, but um, I definitely saw um, an uptick of that and it, 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 it affected me by like, I don't know, it just, it just, it just made me a little bit sad to like see some of my friends like do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I also saw an increase in dropouts, you know, people just completely giving up on school, not trying, you know, they really didn't see a reason to try at school anymore. When uh, quarantine started and they saw that the work, you know, uh, you have to do it uh, or else, you know, what that, um, yeah, some people just didn't really care at that point. They kind of threw their futures away. It's, it's uh, really tragic, but, you know. Not, and not everybody was able to handle the situation this, similarly. So, yeah, and there are people that have uh, turned to uh, unhealthy substances and stuff to try to try to uh, continue doing uh, doing school and academics and stuff. But you know, using ways to cope with it, cope with the stress. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. And it's also hard when some people have much more support structurally or within their family than other people do as well. Yeah, for me personally, I, I feel like I was pretty lucky in a lot of ways because I feel like the, you know, I, I feel like, you know, I've, like, I've, I've, I, it was already something that was kind of like, I don't know, it, I, I guess with me and a lot of my friends and my family and stuff, we're, we're very, we're able to be very honest with how we feel and uh, how it's affecting us. And I think that's really, in a, for me at least, m made those things not affect us, us as much like unhealthy coping strategies. And I'm just really thankful for that because I know a lot of people don't have that, you know, and that can lead to so many things like Sergio said, like dropouts, you know, you know, people just doing, you know, it, it really is tragic. Yeah. I'm just happy that wasn't, that, that wasn't tragic for me. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's especially hard when we see all of these things and a lot of people view them as as failures or faults of an individual, but really they're failure and faults of a system and structure, right? Why is it that students are feeling like they're dropping out because school isn't useful, right? Why are students feeling like the only way that they can cope or or feel feel comfortable in their own body and their own lives is, is using substances, right? Like that's not a fault of the individual, that's a fault of a structure and system, um, right? And like these are symptoms of a larger problem and not the problem itself. Um, and so I think that's, that's something that's really important to recognize about all these personal stories. They're not just, individual anecdotes, right? They're also data points. They're, they're telling us a larger story. And I think another sort of like moving on to like more, more global, larger perspectives on what's been going on, um, sort of going back to the idea of activism um, and being engaged in your community, like both Buddy and Kylie have sort of spoken to, um, what is your relationship to activism? What was it over the pandemic? Did it change? Did you start to identify as an activist and maybe- Watch the end of it. And um, what do you think that this movement towards um, racial justice and a reckoning with our past and present of current injustice and oppression, what do you think that that means now that we're starting to return to school? Um, and how do you hope to have these sort of issues brought up and re-envisioned in the classroom in ways that they haven't been before? I, uh, what I've seen, activism has taken a turn more towards violence, you know. It used to be, you know, you can't be, it, it's always been like that, but more recently, 
especially within our country, it's been more violence, you know, people are turning to violence to try to get their point across, you know, intimidation factor is definitely a big thing. So although I haven't been, although I've been trying to be more part of the activism movement and stuff, if you, it's a bigger risk now. You know, if you are willing to do it, it's a big risk, you know, towards your own, towards your safety and your, the safety of people that are believing what you believe in. So uh, I feel like more people are trying to like get into the activism uh, movement, you know, they don't want to be quiet anymore, you know, just get your point out, but your opinion matters. And if you want to get your word out, you know, go out there and, uh, and do it. But, you know, it's also taking a bit of a risk being safe, you know? Yeah. Yeah. For, for me, uh, activism is become a lot more, uh, I guess almost if for me, it's felt more necessary since the beginning of the pandemic, you know, I, I hadn't really part of, I, I hadn't really done any of that before the pandemic. And now it's kind of almost not necessarily like something, not like it's, it's something that I think I, I, I want to do for, um, the rest of my life, I think, you know, I think activism, uh, the, obviously you not nonviolent activism, you know, uh, and activism within reason, cause there is, there is a lot of activism, which, which can go, uh, a little, a little, <laughs> a lot of different places, but, uh, yeah, I, I'm really, uh, I, I'm, I'm glad that it's part of my life and I think it's made me a better person and it's made me feel like a better person too. I think, you know, getting my opinion and stuff out. Yeah, definitely. I think it definitely galvanized a lot of people into recognizing not only the problems, but their positionality and being able to solve the problems, right? I and mean, how important and vital that is for us as individuals and us as a community. Does anyone else have any other thoughts around like activism or activism in their schools that they wanna share? Okay, it doesn't sound like it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on. Um, and I, I just want to add that I think it's also really important when we think about we think about activism, when we think about violence, that we also think about activism for what and violence towards whom, right? Like I think that there's also a really important distinction between violence towards people and violence towards property, and sort of a problem with us equating the two or or maybe putting value more on property than on people. Um, and so I think it's also important for us to be critical of of the ways in which we're also critical of, of protest and of, of rioting, because you really need to make people discom discom uncomfortable in order for there to be change. Um, if people aren't comfortable, if people are comfortable with your asks, you're, you're not asking them to push hard enough, frankly. Um, and I, I think that is a really difficult line for us to learn how to walk, especially as young people who've never, never really done this before. Um, and so, looking at the, this new lens of equity and equality that I think a lot of us have been focusing a lot pretty intently on a more national scale. Um, how have you seen these issues of equity and equality arise in your own online schooling? Um, this can look like internet connection or lack of internet connection, as well as people having different levels of support at home, um, as well as access to technology, um, as well as other outside responsibilities like picking up a job. Um, so how did you feel, how did you see these issues of equity and equality arise in your own personal lives? I guess I, I can go. I I guess the main thing is I I've noticed when it comes to inequity is it's not so much inequity of opportunities, it's inequity of people feeling comfortable actually 
you know, using those opportunities, you know, because you can have like, you know, say, I don't know, this amount of things for this group, but it's like, if they're not, if, if, if they're not, if they don't feel comfortable using them, even if they are using them in this one specific context, this becomes kind of like, uh, it, it, it kind of, it's kind of like paying yourself on the back without actually really changing anything. Yeah. I feel like this was a big change, especially towards uh, not it's only students, but also parents who don't have uh, English as their first language, you know, communication as well as other stuff was more difficult for them to adapt. You know, they're not really sure what to do. They don't understand what they what they're supposed to do. And uh, especially students who have parents that are not really uh, connect, have what well connections to the school or with the students themselves, you know, if uh, students that have a good connection with their parents or parents who are really into like, that are really engaged with their school, trying to uh, further advance their academics, you know, those are the students that probably did better. Those are probably the parents that actually did uh, focus on the students and how the students uh, perform at school. So definitely those students had an advantage not to mention, yeah. Yeah, definitely for definitely easier for certain people than it was for others. Does anyone else have anything they want to share around like maybe their experiences having access to these things, not having access to these things? I know, at least for me, my Wi-Fi started going out quite consistently during the pandemic, which made classes difficult. And I would just drive for my AP test. My Wi-Fi went out 10 minutes before. So I just started driving. Uh, until we started finding things. Um, so a lot of a lot of stressful events going on there. And if no one has anything to add, I'm going to transition to, into our last planned question before we go into questions sort of from the from the virtual audience. Um, so if any of you if, if any of you guys have any questions um, for our panelists tonight that haven't been addressed or that aren't already in the group chat, um, just type them down in the chat um, and maybe we'll get around to you. Um, we'd love to have some of your new questions in the role. Um, and so our sort of last question is around understanding what we think is possible and not. Um, the pandemic really allowed us to reimagine a lot of the structures of, of what could and couldn't happen and sort of recognize uh, where, where things that we thought were impossible, frankly, weren't impossible, right? Like having a meeting like this tonight, like we spoke to earlier, the pandemic pandemic made us realize that we could have things like this and that people would attend. Um, so are there any examples of things that you thought were impossible that the pandemic made evident were possible? Um, for me, I was able to talk to friends more over FaceTime and especially one of my really close friends who lives pretty far away and we don't get to see each other very much. We started FaceTiming a lot and we actually like deepened our friendship a lot through that. So that was one of the silver linings of having to do a lot of stuff just on devices. That was really good. And I know Atticus um, in the doc, it says um, that you might have some, some thoughts to sort of share around, um, around your sort of movement around getting a state park and try a skate, a skate park and trying to get this uh, project off the ground. Um, do you feel like you felt like the pandemic made certain things possible that were impossible in that regard? Uh, yeah, actually I do. Um, so at Lagunitas, there's a thing called the change project, which um, basically for social studies, we have to um do a project for like changing something in your community and me and uh, a few friends and i uh decided to that we were going to try to get a skate park um in the valley and at logging to school and um and several other classes before us have tried but they uh they failed so we decided to bring it on um, and I, I actually do think that being in a pandemic might have helped us a lot more because we didn't have to um, meet with a ton of the people that we had to meet with because we've been going to meetings like almost every week um, since like December, maybe, uh, maybe even earlier than that. I don't really remember, but 
um, meetings about with the school school boards and different people that we would have had to probably before the pandemic had to meet with in person. So I feel like we've been, uh, our progress has been way more um, and much more quickly. So I think that that um, be, being in a pandemic and over Zoom actually helped us a lot with that. And then there was a lot of reason, like there's a lot of things that helped our case with um, getting a state park as the fact that like, it's a non-contact activity um, and yeah, so like there's no touching an another ball that you're passing to someone or um, touching any like anyone else getting close to anyone because that would be dangerous first of all if you got close to someone else while skating but so I think that there's there's several things that did help us quite a bit um, in our argument for getting a skate park. Uh, to answer your question. Yeah, that's really interesting to learn about. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, uh, for me, uh, I guess I've got, I got a few things done. I mean, earlier today, I was lucky enough to meet with uh, someone from Rins City on Zoom, which is uh, talking about like racial injustice and just uh you know it, it you know it's like that wouldn't have happened last year for me just because of the the distance you know it's like 40 50 minutes away a drive one way and then one way back you know a lot of stuff out here is kind of far away so i think that's really cool and just time in general i've had a lot more time and i during the pandemic which uh, to do a lot of different things, you know, like release some music on Spotify and stuff. And I think that's kind of uh, something that I, I, I hope stays the, the same as during the pandemic is people having more free time to do what they want and also more ability to, especially out here, uh, to really connect with people without having to drive a long ways. Yeah, definitely. I know I can add, um, I know um, we've been found a lot more ways to communicate. Um, I, never, I know we've all um, just like realize that Zoom was a thing a year ago. I never knew it was a thing except for FaceTime, which is, we have Zoom to have our classes. Um, Google Classroom really helped. Um, we got our assignments in. Um, since everything in school was on paper, we, uh, I know I had to help a, a couple of classmates send emails, um, try to figure all of that out and um, use Google Docs and be able to share documents with each other so we could um, get our schoolwork done. And I know um, with a couple of my friends, we um, shared a Google Doc so we could, eat, we could take notes with each other to figure out what we were doing in class. So we, we each understood what we were doing and that helped. Uh, I knew it helped me and my other friends figure out and do our work and pay attention better. And we all got better with technology and everything this year. Yeah, those are definitely some, some important takeaways. Um, Vanessa did text me something in the chat. Um, I think her Wi-Fi um, is a little bit iffy right now, but um, in regards to the last question, she said um, that she goes to a mostly white school um, and that um, there are very few students of color um, and there are a lot of people who aren't bilingual like, like she is, um, and it can be pretty hard, um, especially at Drake, um, where everyone there predominantly speaks English. Um, and it can feel a little bit isolating. 
Um, and so I do want to give some time for um, questions from the crowd, as it may be, the virtual crowd. Um, and uh, Cameron sort of brought up an interesting one. Um, I'm just going to read it out. Um, so he said, and it's also in the chat, um, Buddy shared that he's discovered the importance of activism over the past year and will be committed to activism for the rest of his life. Um, so similar to that, um, is there anything that you've learned this year about yourself that you expect to take with you along into the future? This could be a skill, this could be a life lesson, um, this could be a friendship, um, sort of whatever direction you want to understand the question. I learned that being able to adapt and overcome adversity is definitely very important for success. You know, it's not going to be easy. And with this uh, pandemic, you you kind of got to see it. There's going to be challenges in that. And it's very vital for you to be able to learn and uh, be able to overcome it for you to uh, be able to go on and uh, have a successful career or future, uh, whatever path you're taking. So I definitely learned that you have to be able to learn uh, no matter how difficult it seems or how scary it seems at the beginning, you have to be able to adapt and, uh, you know, uh, keep fighting on until you eventually overcome the challenge or else if you, uh, what's it called, you come up with a challenge and you immediately give up or, you know, you flop, you're not going to be able to get anywhere in life. So you just got to keep fighting. You got to keep going. Adversity, it's going to be everywhere in life, but you just got to keep fighting, you know, and you got to, in order for, in, for it, for, in order to be successful, you know, you just got to keep going. Yeah. I, I remember, I distinctly remember my buddy, maybe you remember this too, um, my seventh grade teacher teaching us the word tenacity as being you holding a dog holding a rope and going grr. And so I think that that's tenacity is definitely a skill that we can all sort of like speak to. We've all learned that whether we want to admit it or not, we've all learned how to be strong in new and different ways. Anything else um, that you feel like you're going to carry with yourself into the future? Good or bad, honestly. Um, this is kind of a small comment, but just to not take things for granted because we took so much for granted before the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of a lot of new small victories. I never thought I'd be so excited to uh, have to go speak to people in person and order coffee in real life. Um, Vanessa um, just texted me another thing she wanted to share. Um, that she's going to carry with her, um, trying new things and to not be afraid and to push yourself to do the most. Um, we've definitely all been pushed to do the most in the pandemic. Um, and so I think these are really great things to sort of carry on. Um, any other skills or lessons? Um, I just want to voice my agreement to Kylie for taking things for granted. Mm -hmm. Definitely taking things, people, super important. Yeah, one, one thing I'd like to add uh, is the idea that I, I think something that I'm going to take from all of this is not shaming future generations for not facing, you know, like a difficult thing. Because, you know, it's like, it's, you know, so you didn't face the coronavirus and, you know, like people that are born like 50, 10, 15 years from now, you know, you're going to face a hard thing in the future. Um, and I think it's not something that you should really like uh, hold over people, you know, which is kind of a weird thing to think about considering it's, this is all just kind of ending right now. But yeah, I think I'll take that away. Yeah. All. Yeah. It's almost like COVID was a weird Teasing. Everyone had to go through. Any other comments? Additionally, I want to say, comments? yeah, additionally, with what I want to say is that with these challenges also come people that want to adjust them, you know, and want to find solutions to certain issues. I feel like that's great for making uh, connections it's definitely going to be very vital you know it's going to definitely help out in the future you know with stuff like this if the coronavirus had happened we wouldn't have meetings like that you wouldn't uh, be able to have connections with people like this so you know i feel like that's going to be very important for you going for, for me and everybody else going forward so i feel like making connections uh while with people that are trying to have same issues as you in times like this is definitely important 
-hmm. Definitely. I do want to move on to one other question um, from a member of the audience. Um, this is just interesting because I think it's sort of like a a step away from sort of the topics that we've been wondering about for the past hour-ish. Um, and so Peter is wondering, how has the pandemic affected your relationship with nature and the land? Um, I know, at least for me, uh, when I was in the pandemic, I would every single lunch break go and like walk around the Mesa and I just learned to explore a lot more of the local land. Um, and so I know that that was like a really important refuge and something I'm super grateful for considering like my roommates from New York, right? She didn't get to have that during the pandemic. Um, and so I think that that's something that like I definitely found important, which is part of why I wanted to ask the question. Um, so have you found the pandemic sort of shaped or changed your understanding or relationship to nature and the land around you? Yeah, definitely. I learned that nature and the land is a great way. It's a great coping mechanism. It's a great way to relieve, relieve stress. You know, I before the pandemic, I enjoyed going on walks, you know, going jogging, working out, stuff like that. But during after um, quarantine and that definitely became a very more important part in your life, you know, something you have to do every day. It's a great like um, I would like to agree with Ruby, you know, it's some something like a refuge. You know, it's a great way to just, uh, like I've been uh, saying before, it's a great way to distract yourself from the world, you know, get away a bit, be able to, um, you know, have an opportunity to be able to uh, connect with yourself more, relax, stuff like that. Definitely nature is very important. And, you know, during the pandemic, you were, you, people have learned to value it more. Yeah, definitely. Especially for that, like, three or, like, one month period where high level was so empty, I swear I could tape and take a nap on it and not get run over. Um, definitely an interesting time. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like my relationship with nature, uh, I think it's gone in some ways uh, much more social, you know, and before I, I, I'm, I go on a lot of walks and hikes and I, I do that a lot as a as a coping mechanism and as kind of like a way to set a routine for myself every day but during the pandemic uh I've done a lot of stuff like hiking with friends and stuff so we can actually like you know social distance and talk and stuff and I think that's that's something I didn't really appreciate about you know the nature around here is how if really uh, can bring out the best in other people yeah and yeah yeah it definitely became a more communal experience are there any other thoughts or comments no worries if not And so one final question I sort of wanted to end with uh, that Ramona just put in the chat um, that I think is a really interesting one to end on. Um, feel free to sort of like read along if you want. Um, but the question is, uh, how can we move from youth engagement to youth empowerment in West Marin, um, where youth are able to define, lead, and guide solutions that will directly impact their lives? This is sort of following in the footsteps of student activists who've led uh, really meaningful change throughout the entire US. So what are some tangible things that you feel like you can ask for um, that will help allow you to sort of redefine what you want and give you more power and agency to help support yourselves? And this doesn't have to be a big, fully thought out answer to an impossible question. These, these can also be small things. Uh, I guess the first thing that comes to mind is giving youth who are struggling the most an opportunity to speak. Cause like, I, I feel like that, or people that just don't speak, youth that don't normally speak, speak. Cause I, I, I've gone and I've done a lot of stuff when it comes to like, you know, like youth activism and youth 
uh, empowerment stuff, and it's it feels like it's geared toward a certain type of, you know, like it it's not it's 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 really in a lot of ways not geared for everyone, and I I hope that that changes, and I think if it if that changes, then a lot a lot more young people will get involved in our community. Yeah, definitely. We need to decenter the like white white cis hetero narrative of of whose whose troubles matter and whose troubles are given time to be spoken about, especially in a in a really like racially and socioeconomically diverse and, and complicated space like West Marin. Those are really important things to keep in mind. Anything else? Any other comments on this people want to share? I think it's really important to be having conversations like these and bringing in youth from different places and just asking questions about what our experiences have been because I feel like if we had these conversations in the midst of when COVID was really I mean just any time in the past year actually it could have been really beneficial if we had these conversations earlier too because we could have made change then instead of just now but this conversation right now is really vital to reflect and talk about what it's been like. But if we had more of these before, I think we could have made some change and helped so that a lot of mental health of students and kids everywhere could have been better overall if we had more conversations like these. Yeah, definitely giving space for youth to just sort of explain themselves is really important. I do want to honor the time, but if anyone else has any final burning comments or, or points they want to make, whether it's about this question or anything else, um, now's the time. Sounds like the burning questions aren't so burning. Um, so Alexis, is there anything else you want to say? Um, before we first and foremost say thank you to every single one of the panelists who is able to be here tonight um, and to share their, their personal experiences and difficulties throughout the pandemic. Yeah, I just want to um, ask everyone to just take a second to come off mute and give a round of applause and say thank you to yes. our What an Good incredible lesson. job. Good job, everybody. Thank you, uh, that, that Each and every one of you. So yes, thank you. Learned a lot. <laughs> yeah. And I just want a, a special shout out to Ruby um, for Zooming in late at night for her time to moderate. Um, you impress me always, and I'm so happy that you got to join us tonight and to be a part of this. Um, and yeah, huge thank to our students, to everyone at the West Marine Coalition for Healthy Youth who helped make this happen, and to all of you for tuning in and letting our young people know that listening to them is important to you, and that's that's huge. So just thanks, everyone. Have a lovely evening. We're hoping to do more of these discussions where we bring together all of West Marin and, and everyone here. So. And also, thank you to Judith also for the interpretation. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Um, that was huge. So thank you. Wonderful. Good night. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Good, night. Good job, Good night. everybody. Next gen. <laughs>